welcome to yet another episode of AAU Impact Stories on AAU Television, a program dedicated to celebrating academic mentors all over Africa. Today, the AAU cameras are back in Ghana, and we are on the campus of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, where we have identified an academic icon who is going to tell us his life story. Follow us on AAU TV and on our social media platforms on Facebook, YouTube, and our dedicated website, tv.au.org. Before I introduce the personality for the day, let's go for a short break. In 1961, a joint special fund project between the government of Ghana and the United Nations to develop the public administrative system resulted in the creation of what we know today as Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. Then, our mandate was to train civil servants with professional competence to plan and administer national, regional and local services. More than 50 years later, GIMPA has transformed itself into a leading management development institute in Africa. We have emerged as an internationally renowned and respected institute with a strong reputation as a center of excellence in teaching, learning and management development. With an experienced faculty with international connections, motivated students and supportive administrative staff, GIMPA has positioned itself as an innovative, self-financing institution with repeatable academic programs in leadership and governance, business, technology and law. The GIMPA Business School is a flagship program enrolling more than two-thirds of the total GIMPA student body. From its establishment in 1987 as Green Hill College, the school now offers 11 undergraduate degree specializations, 5 postgraduate certificates and diplomas, and over 10 master's programs. And the school was the first Ghana member of the Association of African Business Schools. Hello there and welcome back to AAU Impact Stories where we are celebrating academic icons. Today I have with me the former rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, Professor Yao Ajiman Bedu. Prof, this is AAU TV and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm pleased to be here uh, this morning. Okay. <laughs> First, we are delving a little bit into your, your childhood experiences. The name itself, Yao Ajiman Bedu, and your humble demeanor speaks of a very humble beginning. Can you walk us through your life stories up to the secondary school level? Uh, okay. Uh, I was born in a small town in the Ashanti region of Ghana uh, called Safu. It's about uh, 14 miles from, from Kumasi, which is the capital of Ashanti, Ashanti region. Uh, I grew up in a large family, I mean huge family. Uh, as my name suggests, you know, the old folks who know this, Yao Ajiman Bedu, I'm the last born, the tenth born mm. of, of my mother. So okay. it was so special those days, you get Ba means son and then D-U uh, means ten, Badu tenth born. So, oh, so literally. That, that is the Akan <laughs> Uh, meaning or a kind translation of the name. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so I got that name. And also my, 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 my dad had a, you know, uh, a second wife with 11 children. So really, I grew up in a, in a large family. Uh, raised in the town or village, you know, early childhood. I started my ed education at uh, Safo Presby Primary School. Uh, and I tell people that most of the values that I hold today actually uh, I learned from early childhood uh, in the town and also at the church. The Presby Church is almost like the Boy Scout, you know, uh, don't tell a lie, uh, you know, don't r disrespect anybody older than you, uh, respect all your elders. So, I grew up with all these uh, values. And also growing up, you know, with 21 children in the, in the family. And unfortunately for us, the old man died when I was just a little kid. So it was left with my two mothers and my older brothers and sisters to take care of the rest of us. Uh, so you learn uh, to be humble, you, you, you learn to also learn from the old ones and listen to 
uh, to them. Uh, so that's, that's how I grew up in uh, the idea or the conception of hard work and, you know, doing what you are told to do. I learned all of this, you know, from the family, from school, uh, and from the church. I think these okay. are the three uh, influences as, yeah. I, as I was growing up. It's yeah. very interesting to know that the church has really played a role <laughs> in mentoring you right from inception. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, when you completed your primary school, I believe that you also had some ambitions, career ambitions. Mm -hmm. What secondary school did you attend, and what were your career ambitions then? Okay, if I don't say this, they will kill me. I <laughs> attended the best secondary school in Ghana, Asantima Secondary School. <laughs> wow, Asantima <laughs> Secondary School. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, in those days, you took the common entrance examination at Form 3, and then you go to secondary school. Okay. Uh, my family, we didn't have really uh, money to continue. In fact, all my older brothers, they were not able to leave from Form 3 to go to secondary school because they couldn't afford uh, to pay the fees. I was the first one able to go to secondary school as a day student because I couldn't go to boarding house. Okay. Fortunately for me, uh, in the first semester, I got Cocoa Marketing Board Scholarship. So I was, go I was able to go to the boarding house. And since we are in education, I must say this, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I'm sold on the free, uh, you know, high school education in Ghana because I come from a family where my you know, these guys ahead of me were so intelligent, but they couldn't go to secondary school mm. right away. Mm. So I, I'm thinking that these days, if we can afford for everybody to go, that's what we should do as a nation. You broke the yoke uh, to become the trailblazer, uh, uh, and uh, others followed, I guess. Uh, uh, right, but you know, and, and you know, I said they couldn't go right away to secondary yeah. school, but they were the able to through they took a longer way but okay. all of them eventually were able to complete secondary schools and mm. training colleges and became successful okay. uh, in in their own right okay so uh -huh. in in secondary school what were your dreams uh secondary school it was just to you know to study pass your o level exams pass your a level exams that's all we knew Mm. Just to study hard, play hard, have fun, but always uh, the exams was at the back of your mind. Okay. Especially if you come from a village and mm. now you are in the city and you know if you don't pass, you may end up again in the village okay. and you don't want to do that. So, you know, ambitions, careers, we didn't know anything about that, <laughs> you know. Mm. Went to secondary school and that was like my first or second time in Kumasi, so ro very raw okay. uh, from the village. And all I knew was just the books right. and then to, uh, right. to, to study mm. hard and make something out of my life. But what I wanted to do, I had no you idea. You had no idea then. Uh, at, at that then time. you entered the University of Ghana in 1971. Uh, uh, right. But even that before that, let me tell uh, you know, one of my remarkable stories and this one is recorded in the annals of of gimpa okay. you know uh, the school i attended to didn't have sixth form at that time i was a pure science student and imagine doing science at a school where you didn't even have uh, laboratories and things like that and you're studying science uh, so if i fail my physics exams at the o level at the o level so i couldn't go to sixth form and I, ha I had a family member who was at a, a university uh, professor. And he said, look, you've passed to go to the university, so there's no point in wasting time. So he advised me how to do it. So for two years, I stayed home and studied for my A-levels okay. uh, on my own. Mm. So in two years' time, when my mates got to the University of Ghana, I you was there, there with them. Wow. And they were asking me, how did you do it? Yeah. And I said, well, I did it. Uh, but I had to change from science to arts. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I tell people to date, mm. you know, I consider that to be my biggest achievement. Wow. 
wow. academically. Wow. And a lot of my classmates, once I was able to do it, yeah. they would say, oh, if Ajima Bedu can do it, we and can also do it. Then they, they can do spirits. Yes, and, okay. and they were all started coming, those who couldn't wow. go to wow. sixth form. Right? Uh, and, and I'm so proud of that, of wow. that achievement. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So in 71, I, I went to the University of Ghana, okay. uh, studied uh, economics, uh, political science and, and sociology in my, okay. you know, for my first university exams. Uh, you know, in those days, after the first university exams, there were three options. Either you get kicked out <laughs> <laughs> or you do uh, general arts or you, do, you did honors. Okay. But for the first time in uh, at University of Ghana, they introduced what they call combined honors degree. Okay. So at that point, I dropped sociology, and I and I, I took uh, economics okay. and political science uh, for my degree. That was the first time the university uh, introduced, mm -hmm. and I was among the beneficiaries wow. uh, of that. Twenty uh, years on, I also read economics and political science ah, from the great. same university. <laughs> uh, we were the pioneers. Okay. <laughs> right. right. That is good to know. Uh, uh, yes, okay. we were the pioneers. So you graduated. Uh, in economics and political, and science, political combined. science combined. Combined. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, it, they didn't call it double honors, they just call it combined, combined. honors, okay. as opposed to my mates who did honors in economics or honors in, uh, in political science. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. The, did you work before you pursued your master's degree? Uh, no, no work experience whatsoever. As soon as I finished the University of Ghana, I was fortunate to get a a scholarship to the University of South Carolina. So two days after my exams at Legon, I packed my bags and I was gone. Uh, Viewers, to the US. this is very interesting. <laughs> we are talking to Professor Yawajiman Bedu, former rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. He's talking about his life story before doing his master's program abroad. Let's go for a short break and when we come back, we shall talk about Professor Yao Ajman Bedu's exploits after his bachelor's degree at the University of Ghana. <laughs> Stay tuned. As a center of excellence, GIMPA has signed numerous MOUs with multilateral agencies, NGOs, universities, and management development institutions across the globe. We are also engaged in a number of initiatives and programs with various foundations and groups. One such collaboration is with the African Capacity Building Foundation, where for the past eight years, we have designed programs to improve performance of public sector through balanced academic and professional training in public sector management in Africa. From the business leader to parliamentarians to the highest ranking leaders in our government, the GIMPA student and training participant has high expectations of the institute. With our air-conditioned classrooms and pristine grounds, GIMPA's commitment to excellence is also reflected in the state of our campus. Our recent investment projects include a state-of-the-art conference center with 128 guest rooms, a 250 capacity conference hall and other meeting rooms, a three-story office block named the Unibank Building, a four-story faculty of law building and the creation of a student center complete with relaxation rooms and business services for our students. To our students, we offer accommodation, a health clinic, laundry services, and host of other important facilities all spread over the serene and peaceful Green Hill campus, and our student interests are represented by a student affairs office and an active student representative council. As we continue to grow, expanding beyond our Green Hill campus is one of our key focus areas. Three years ago, we relocated our Accra campus to the central business district of Accra. More recently, we opened regional campuses in Kumasi, Takrade, and Tema. With this distinctive white and blue architecture located on beautiful grounds in the Achimota Green Hill area of Accra, ours is an academic community where students and faculty thrive and aim for excellence in all they do. Welcome back, viewers, to AAU Impact Stories, where we are talking to Professor Yao Ajiman Bedu, former rector of Gimpa in Ghana. Prof, before the break, you told us a very interesting story about you just finishing your bachelor's and two days later you packed your bag and left the shores of Ghana. Can you just continue from this uh, story? Yes, I, you know, I left Ghana with, with no working experience actually. Uh, 
not much experience. I just went straight to, to graduate school. Uh, and so I continued on to graduate school and all I knew was just my books. You know, and this was a public administration program and just about everybody was either working for the government of South Carolina or the federal government. And maybe two of us with no work experience. So when you're having class discussions, they will, so, you know, one of your colleagues will turn to you and say, oh, how do you do this at your agency? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an agency. <laughs> I've never worked in an, in an agency. Mm. So it wasn't easy, okay. but had to, had to learn. Uh, continuously and with a few other African students at the university all we knew it was our books mm -hmm. you know if you wanted to see me find me the best place was in the library wow. uh, after class we just went straight mm -hmm. and stayed in the library when it closes we went home to sleep okay. uh, so we we, we, we we learned quite a bit and uh, once in a while we will socialize outside the classroom outside mm. outside the mm. school, so that one was really a learning uh, experience. Uh, it was a one-year master's, master's program. Okay. Uh, did that successfully? Uh, I didn't have to write a thesis, but I wanted to go on and do my PhD, so I opted to to write a master's uh, thesis. Okay. Uh, and incidentally, my my thesis uh, for my Ghanaian listeners was on the evolution of public administration uh, in Ghana. Oh. Uh, it's still interesting to read, but I'm scared to go back and read my own thesis these days. I was going to ask, <laughs> what is in that thesis, uh, the uh, key uh, element? Right, right. One public administration was evolving at that time. Uh, right, yeah. it was evolving, but among the interesting things, we looked at the evolution. Uh, meant that we went back and looked at some of the traditional forms of uh, public administration uh, in Ghana. Uh, for example, the, uh, the Asante Hines court. Mm. They, I mean, they had such an organized bureaucracy uh, in those days okay. uh, for, you know, domestic affairs, for foreign relations. And I mean, they were so organized, a very uh, organized bureaucracy, as we know of today, applied uh, in, in those days. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we go on to uh, independence and then the early bureaucracy in Ghana. And we know that uh, some of the names in, in Ghana's uh, civil service like A.L. Edu and mm -hmm. some of those people were so professional okay. and some of them moved on to the UN and, and other places but these people were so professional in the early days oh. uh, so these days where we are talking of all the problems in Ghana's bureaucracy the beginning was okay although it was you know the the work they did was a bit rudimentary uh, guiding the new government. Okay. But when we talk of partisan politics today, we need to know that the problems of uh, bureaucracy and development are uh, somehow the politicians began to tamper with the administrative systems, mm -hmm. you know, right after independence. And that's how we got ourselves into trouble. And instead of making good progress, somehow we regressed in a lot of areas uh, in, in, in Ghana. Yes, uh, talking about your thesis, was it published in any journal? Uh, I, I published uh, one, one paper from it, okay. but there's, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a system where, you know, if you Google uh, the topic or the title or the name, uh, you can actually uh, purchase, I think it's the University of uh, Michigan, where they store the archives uh, of all these theses and, and things like that. Okay. Uh, you have a remarkable um, post, first degree achievement. In five yeah. years, you have completed yeah. your PhD. Yeah. So what, what, what is the secret? Uh, the, I think part of it was just continuation, okay. uh, you know, at the same school for my master's and my 
and my PhD, I just continue okay. uh, after the uh, after the masters. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, if you go to another school, you may have to do some prerequisites to satisfy the school. But right. staying in the same school, uh, there are advantages in that, right. and I think that's what right. happened in, in my in my case. Oh, okay. uh, Right. So after PhD, I thought you went on a scholarship, so you're going to come back to Ghana. Uh, no, actually it was a scholarship given by the foreign university, All right. uh, where I was going, the University of Ghana. Mm. Uh, sorry, University, University of, of South Mi Carolina. Okay. So really, I didn't have any obligations in Ghana. But right. like most of us who went to the diaspora, you are always prepared to come home, but you never come. Mm. Uh, and, I <laughs> and you stayed on for 25 years. <laughs> and I stayed on for 25 years. I got my first job teaching, and then it just continued. It just mm. continued. As I say, most Ghanaians, especially those of us, you know, in the classroom, you have your bags packed. You are always coming, but you, you just don't make it, you know, coming. Uh, so, so really, I, I stayed over uh, teaching, researching, publishing, uh, you know, apart from occasional visits and maybe conferences, I just, I just stayed on. And really, I, I did not consciously plan to come to Ghana. I said, when I retire, mm. I will come. Mm. But it took Gimpa to convince me to come back to Ghana. Wow. I mean. Before <laughs> Gimpa convinced you to come to Ghana, yeah. how did your folks back home in Ghana see you? as one of their own who is making it in the United States? You know, uh, for, for me, the background where, where I grew up, you just don't go and forget about your folks. Right. So constantly in touch uh, and visiting when, when I can, uh, making phone calls back home, although it wasn't easy those days. Yeah. You go and book the phone call and wait uh, to hear from, <laughs> for them to call you back to come and talk, but we kept in touch. Right. We, we, we kept mm. in touch, never, you know, forgetting where I came from. Exactly. And so, no matter how successful I was in somebody's country, uh, Ghana was always my home. This is the boy from Safo, and I never forgot that. Mm. Mm. Ne so you, never you served that. as a role model to some people within the family, I guess. Uh, within the family. Uh, but you know, in my family, as I said, I was the, I was the last born. By the time I got my PhD, there were three other PhDs ahead of me. Uh, before I became a professor, there were, <laughs> there were three other uh, professors, professors ahead of me. <laughs> okay. uh, but you know, the, the lesson there is that you, know, you, you achieve all of these things with the help of, of others, especially in my case, the older ones in the family. Yeah. Uh, so you learn to be to be respectful, to be humble, okay. knowing that you did not do these things yourself. Mm -hmm. And then any time we came back and visited the, the village, one favorite place was always to go back to the, to the primary school, to uh, the middle school, mm -hmm. interact, go back to the classroom, mm -hmm. meet the teachers, mix with the town folks and, and okay. stuff like that. Do, do, I mean, mm -hmm. I just, found those useful and, and interesting and you know contributing something to the village because they love to see myself and my siblings come back to the to the village mm. they, they just love that uh, okay <laughs> you got pushed by Gimpa to come yeah. and do what okay uh, I met the rector of Gimpa at a conference in Washington DC and uh, you know, in his own characteristic way, he asked me. Who was the rector? Uh, <laughs> professor Stephen Ade. Oh, okay. Now he is Professor Emeritus Stephen Ade. Mm. And he says, hey, young man, what are you doing here? You're wasting time. And I look at him and say, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, you know, I want you to come to Gimpa, look at what we're doing there, and think about if you want to come and join us. Mm. Uh, because, you know, we're changing the face of the institution and I'm looking for scholars uh, of your caliber to come and help mm. with a course. Mm. So I, I brushed it aside. So it was, I think the conference was in March. Okay. I came home on vacation in June. 
and decided to come and visit Gimpa. I came and, you know, got his office in two minutes. He said, let me just walk you around the campus. Mm. So we went around and he showed me all the things he's doing. And he said, you go back and think about it if you want to come and, 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 and help us. So uh, I talked with a few friends, including people who stayed in the U.S. and had come back right. to, to Ghana, talk with family people. And I said, oh, this is very interesting. And it was an exciting time to come back uh, to Gimpa. In 1999, 2000, Gimpa was going through this transition from a small, struggling civil service institution to an academic institution that was doing great things. Uh, Gimpa was taking advantage of the institutional renewal process in Ghana, where, you know, the state uh, allowed certain institutions become self-financing, self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And Professor Ade got the government to allow Gimpa to do that. Right. So it was exciting uh, time to come to Gimpa. We had to pay for ourselves, so by developing new programs, uh, innovative programs, new ideas. Uh, so I came in and, and look at the place, what was going on. I said, I'm going home. And you know, some people just look at me, you know, are you sure? I said, well, if I go and it doesn't work, I can always come back. <laughs> so, uh, but I came back without much hesitation. Okay, so what really motivated you, apart from maybe the, 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 the need to innovate, was there <laughs> any pecuniary interest that brought you to Gimpa? Maybe you were attracted by fatter salaries or, you know, no, something I, else? <laughs> actually, myself and a lot of people, when you come, uh, if you consider the money, you won't come. Okay. Uh, because you give up a lot of a lot of money, you know. Uh, years, years, years later, when students from uh, Gimpa went to my former school, somebody took them to my old office. They come back and say, "Pro, you gave up all of this <laughs> to come to Gimpa." And I say, yes. "Yes." But for me, the motivating factor was really the fact that you know you can make a contribution. Right. I, and I think that was, that was the leading one, mm. that I can make a contribution. Yeah. Uh, because, um, you know, what Gimpa was doing at that time, under the leadership of, of Professor Day, was, you know, new programs, new buildings, a lot of things were going on. And he said, you know, yeah, I need you to come in as an academic right. so that I can spend time doing a lot of the other things, public relations, bringing in programs, uh, you know, uh, dealing with the government and so forth. So I came in and he handed over a lot of the academic programs to me uh, as the, as the uh, dean of the graduate school right. to run some of these programs. Mm. And also in six months time, I see it came in January, uh, no, in in eight months time, I had become the deputy rector of, of Gempa. So really, the, uh, he gave to me, you know, the chief academic officer so that I can do a lot of the academic programs and a lot of the curriculum changes and, and, and stuff like that. So for me, the notion that I could make uh, a contribution, contribution and that I made a contribution mm. Mm. was worth the sacrifice that I made in, in coming yeah. here. So yeah. will you say that the systemic change that you brought has been very impactful? Well, well, well I would say the systemic change that we brought. Uh, so, you know, after I came, you know, uh, we started a lot of uh, programs, a lot of changes. For example, when I was coming, uh, this building here, the, uh, this graduate block auditorium was under construction. When I was coming, the, uh, the uh, executive conference center was, was under construction. We came in and we had a chance to split a graduate school. It was one graduate school, okay. uh, but the subscription 
was so successful, we split into the uh, uh, business school, graduate school, and then governance and leadership, which right. was purely uh, a graduate school. Right. And that's where most of the government leaders, uh, parliamentarians used to, uh, used to come, either for degree programs or executive short-term program. Right. And so in, in the business school, uh, there was an uh, ongoing executive master's program. We expanded and then brought in uh, other, other programs. And these were very successful because I came in 2004. Uh, all the innovation and things taking place, Gimpa had, had made a good name in Ghana right. you know, for innovation. Everybody will tell you, you know, Gimpa is so successful, go to, go to Gimpa. So my role, in addition to others, was sustainability, right. to make sure we sustain what had started uh, and that people were coming, very qualified people. Uh, so, so we're able to, to do that. Yeah. Uh, and in, in those days, the you know, interesting thing is that schools outside Ghana would hear of the transition at Gimpa and they will come to learn the model. Uh, Viewers, we are talking to Professor Yao Ajimam Bedu, former rector of Gimpa, and he is telling us about the niche of Gimpa as a management and leadership training higher education institution in Ghana. Let's go for a quick break, and when we come back, we shall look at the role of Professor Yao Ajimam Bedu as a substantive rector and chief executive officer of Gimpa. Stay tuned in. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue in East Legon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 0244-6 Three, three, Welcome back everybody. This is AAU Impact Stories where we are celebrating academic mentors. And if you just tune in, we are talking to Professor Yao Ajiman Bedu, who was a former rector of Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Prof, before we went on break. <laughs> We were talking about you as a transformative young academic poached by the then <laughs> rector of Gimpa to come and help rebuild this institution. We know on record that you became the substantive rector. It was just for a period of four years. That's right. Were you able to achieve any ambitious program that you set yourself to do? I achieved quite a lot in my in my short period of time, and uh, and you know by the time I became the rector, if you look at the course of my academic career, I had been uh, department head, I have been associate dean, I had been dean, deputy rector, and then the rector. So you know I had seen it all right. as long as it was. Uh, in the academic area, and I de first I describe myself as a teacher, a scholar, uh, manager, and then now I'm, I'm calling myself uh, a, a leader. Uh, one of the things that I learned immediately is that being deputy rector and a rector are not the same. Okay. Uh, you know, as rector, you have to make decisions. You have to make the decision. Mm. Uh, typically in Ghana and a lot of African countries, you see that, you know, uh, subordinates have a tendency to minute on, you know, memos and things for your attention, sir, for your attention, sir. So everybody is passing up the ball. Right. It comes to your 
this and you don't have a choice. You have to make the decision. Mm. You know, given my background, I did not like to take decisions. But all of a sudden, now you are the head. You have to take the decision. So I learned very quickly I had to do that. Okay. For good or for bad, you have to take the decision and deal with the consequences of that. So uh, that was uh, among the first change. Okay. And immediately when I assume office, also when I say it wasn't easy, when you are following in the footsteps of a very successful, uh, dynamic, and, and well-known leader. leader, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Mm. Uh, we're two different personalities. Right. Uh, so first I had to be myself. Uh, and do my own thing in my quiet demeanor. Uh, where I needed to make changes, I did. Where I had to continue with old systems, uh, I did. So, in other words, I learned to be my own person. Mm. Uh, building alliances on campus, uh, I, you know, in the first few weeks, I told the whole of Genfa, look, uh, if we work together, I know we will succeed. And when we succeed, I make sure everybody will experience and share in the benefits of our success. Right. So fortunately for me, for example, uh, we, we had some big money as soon as I took over. And everybody was asking, are we going to get bonus? Are we going to get bonus? And I said, I will try. So at academic board meeting, uh, we look at our finances and discovered we could give bonus. It was getting to Christmas. Okay. So uh, this was the decision we made. Uh, we gave everybody on this campus the same amount of bonus. Yeah. I think it was 400 Ghana cities. Okay, flat rate. Flat rate to everybody. Wow. So imagine uh, some of the junior level employees making less than uh, 400 that amount. that amount and now for Christmas it has that as a bonus very I mean very motivational that was that was the hit mm, mm. so from that point you come to Gimpa and the grounds you know well kept green wow. all the wow. time you go you don't have to talk too loud mm. for people to do their work and mm. you know that mm. set uh, the train uh, for what we were able to do and accomplish at, at Game Park. We got everybody on, on board. board. Got there some low points in your life as either the deputy director or director? Uh, there, were, there were some low points. Uh, and these days I tell people leadership in Ghana, in Africa, is hard. I don't use the word uh, it's not easy. It's, it's hard. Right. Uh, no matter what you do, you can't please everybody. And so, and you shouldn't. Uh, but I had a clear vision and I had pasted it on my wall. It was around campus, uh, Gimpers vision. I had 10 point agenda that at the end of my tenure, I want you to judge me by these things. Uh, so no matter the bad times, I stuck. I stuck with that vision. Uh, I will constantly look, look, look at it, uh, you know. So, so we, had, we had some bad times because, you know, where uh, people try to damage your reputation in Ghana. And sometimes it hurts, yeah. you know. People writing anonymous letters to accuse you of stealing money, uh, where you know you haven't taken anybody's dime. But was Gimpa not semi-autonomous? Gimpa was semi-autonomous. So it was our own internal people. Somebody okay. get aggrieved. And before you know, they're doing these things. And sorry to say they are doing it up to today. And anything that goes wrong at the institution, you know, ultimately, rector is responsible. But rector cannot go around every classroom to look at broken chairs, broken toilets. But everything. The bulk <laughs> lies with the rector. <laughs> the bulk lies with a with a rector, and okay. sometimes you go home and you are drained, yeah. <laughs> you are exhausted. 
Uh, but I think the job was challenging and interesting. Right. Uh, so when you completed your first term, or your term mm -hmm, as a rector mm -hmm. of Gimpa, you left again the shores of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, uh, after my tenure, I wanted to leave the scene okay. uh, and, just, and just go away. I think the break is good for the institution, for the new rector coming in, and also for the outgoing uh, rector. So I, I went on sabbatical leave uh, back to the, to the US. Uh, I was going for just one year, but I ended up spending two years. Okay. Uh, after that, I went to Liberia. It was on a USAID uh, project. Uh, and I was there to help the Liberia Institute of Public Administration build their capacity. And the interesting thing is that this is an institution that we had helped over the years from Gimpa here. And now I had a chance to go there and work with them and, and help them uh, continue to, to build their capacity. And I might say that today they are doing very well. Oh, they are do, doing very well. Okay. Yeah. Now talking about grooming, you have <laughs> groomed institutions. Has you groomed individuals? You know, the, uh, I've groomed uh, some individuals. Okay. Uh, and, you know, when I say Liberia, since we're on it, like, there are at least two people there that really, uh, you know, I help uh, to, to, to move up. One of them was my student here at Gimpa that I supervised his thesis and guess the title public administration in Liberia. <laughs> and then there was another one who also came to school here. Uh, but the interesting thing is that if you go to Liberia, <coughs> excuse me, today, there are a lot of senior people who came to Gempa. And I, I was among the people who trained uh, most, most of these people. Uh, at Gempa here, one of my celebrated cases was a young, uh, PhD student at Legon that I needed uh, teaching research assistance, so we brought him on board. And he's still here. Uh, he's now a senior lecturer. Mm. I expect him to be a professor very soon. I mean, very hard working at all fronts. And you know, so it's, it's so gratifying to know that I was able to impact his life. And coming back, find myself teaching with him on some of my classes and it's, it's so interesting to have this old guy there and this young the dynamic guy in the mentor and mentee, <laughs> and, the mentor and, the and, and it's, uh, you know, it makes for very exciting, exciting class. Oh, good conversations don't end. <laughs> but before we wrap up on this uh, interesting engagement, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about yourself as an academic who doesn't seem to want to retire? Uh, I just said, I, uh, I am academic. Uh, the years that I spent in administration, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I made an impact at Gimpa and across West Africa and even in, in Africa. But my passion is really teaching. Mm. So now I'm back to Gimpa working uh, with a PhD program, uh, bringing out uh, new PhDs. So uh, I spend most of my time, you know, not just the grading, but guiding them to do their dissertations. Uh, the teaching is limited, but guiding them in, in writing uh, thesis. You know, it took one professor in South Carolina who sat me down and said, yeah, you know, doing a PhD is, is like driving a car. Once you learn the mechanics, uh, then you, you are able to do it successfully. So I'm imparting uh, that knowledge to uh, the PhD students and, and some uh, on some of the senior programs. So apart from the PhD uh, classes, I do some of the masters and then the special uh, programs. and. Uh, and I just love it. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to retire, 
uh, you know, uh, as long as I can climb the stairs to come to my office, okay. I think I'm still uh, fit to teach and I can make a contribution. Uh, and these days when I go out on speaking engagement, I tell people, you know, the moment you stop learning and contributing, then you become irrelevant. Mm. And I want to be relevant. Contribute not just to Gimpa, but to Ghana uh, and, and, and a lot of other countries where I can. Okay. So um, what legacy are you leaving for your grandchildren? Are uh, you writing any novels or something that they will read about grandpa? Uh, I have a book to write. I, uh, I haven't started. Uh, I recall I went to St. John's Grammar School for speech and prize giving the speaker and I told them, when I retire fully, one of the things I want to do is to go back to school and pass my physics exam, the <laughs> O-level exam, where I flunk so badly. <laughs> uh, you know, I just want to teach the kids that, you know, don't give up. Yeah. You have to keep going and you succeed. Mm -hmm. Now I can pass the exams. All the things I couldn't figure out in those days, now I understand but, them. But you swap programs <laughs> from uh, science to math, and you want to go back. I want to change the nine <laughs> on my transcript. Uh, so, uh, but for my grandchildren, you know, for, for them to know that, you know, if they work hard, they will succeed. And they cannot ride on the success of their father, grandfather, and, and then their uncles and so forth. They have to work hard. And that in all that you do, you have to have a touch of humility because you are always riding on the shoulders of, of others. And you have, to be, you have to be very grateful for that and leave a legacy that others can, can emulate. I always uh, cite what I call a life of significance. It's not about how much money that you make uh, or you leave behind. It's about the impact that you've made. Uh, it could be nationwide, it could be uh, in, small, in small areas, but you need to leave uh, a legacy uh, that is worthwhile that others will, will, will learn from. We have come to the end of another episode of AAU Impact Stories where we have been talking to Professor Yao Ajeman Bedu, former rector of Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Stay tuned in for other programs on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Take care and see you next week. Bye. <laughs>